The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. From TFNN, welcome to the August 5th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but way, way more important than that. During this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trained down 712 points, 25,771 is the print. S&P's off 78 points. It's about two and seven tenths percent to the downside. So all indices in the red lead. The charge to the downside it is the semis off four percent. They're trading down 61 points, 1426 is the print there. You've got the spot volatility X up 29, almost 30%. That's up five buckaroonies. She's trading at 2282. Gold's up 17 bucks, silver nine pennies. Light sweet crude off 65 cents. Lean the charge to the upside. Oh, sorry, no chart being posted there. That doesn't help out. Let me get the uh, chart out there. Uh, otherwise, you're looking at what? Who knows what? You're just looking at my ugly mug. We don't want to do that. Here, we got the chart. So lead the charge to the upside out here. You've got, um, I don't know what this is, Alicos up 130%, buyout, IPO, who knows. Uh, individual stock-wise, it would be Tyson Foods that's leading the charge up $5.60, 7% out there. ABIO Med is up 5 bucks. Otherwise, it's all ETFs that are trading out there. To the downside, Booking Holdings off 52, Amazon down 50, Google off 41, Mercado Libre off 39, Intuitive Surgical 21. Plenty of things moving to the downside. So where do we begin? Let's go take a look. I believe there's a question that has come in. Let's go take a look at that. Well, there's a couple of questions that have come in. So let's take a look at uh, first uh, James. James writes in, says, uh, hey, Steve. Hey, James. Hope you're having a great day. I am. Hope you're having a great day, too. All right, so let's get out. He says, uh, James says, I got out of most of my positions a couple of weeks ago, only holding some gold and some mining equities. I would like to know when I can get back into the S&P 500. If you have any time, um, and also the uh, queues out there. So <clears throat> here's the easiest way. What, what James didn't do is he didn't share with us. Um, when he says get in, what does he mean by getting in? Is this just as a trade? Is this is for a longer term standpoint? So we don't know that. So, but let's answer James' question as best as we can. Maybe for all traders, all time frames out there. So let's start with what we know. Here's what we know about the. Uh, here's what we know about the markets. Could not be any easier than actually taking a uh, look at. Uh, I don't know why I've got a problem with this white line there, but to hope, hopefully we don't have any system problems during the hour. 
forth. But here's what we're taking a look at. We've got the Dow equity futures contract. And what I want you to pay attention to is really the message here is very simple. The Dow is still in a consolidation pattern. When we take a look at the Dow equity futures contract, the consolidation is just so clear. It's between the level of 26,803. I know you're going to say, well, didn't we get above the 26,803 level inside the Dow equity futures contract? We did, but we never broke above, closed above on a monthly basis, the rising trend line. You and I have talked about this in the past. And so now you've got these two horizontal lines, a 26.803, in essence, the top of the consolidation, the bottom somewhere in the 23.207 level. Uh, James, we should be fortunate enough to get the Dow down into that 23207 level. What would also be nice about that is you've got a little rising trend line off of the bottom of the consolidation from August in 2015. That's a green diagonal line out there. We won't pay too much attention to that, but, but really to answer your question, we're in a consolidation. If you can't bust them to the upside, you very well can bust them to the downside. I'm not saying we're going to do this overnight. This could take time. This could take until October. This could take until January. I don't know. The consolidation, last consolidation that we had, it's clearly marked here, began in 2014. We didn't know that at the time. But uh, we had a pretty good idea, I would say, by March and certainly by May of 2015, when the previous highs could not be taken out. Price did what? It came back down to the bottom of the consolidation and tested that level a couple of different times, these consolidation patterns can last for a long period of time. So with regard to intermediate term time frame trading, if you're looking at putting a bunch of cash together, the ideal place to put that to work is going to be at the bottom of the consolidation unless we see something otherwise. So I hope that helps you out with regard to that question. Now, you may be an intraday trader. You may be, say, looking just for a trade out there. Uh, for example, we've got some intraday traders inside the Tiger's Den out here. And in essence, they're kicking the can, kicking around the same question out there hey, is there a short-term bottom that might be in play out here? And to answer that question, all Stevie has to really do is go take a look at short-term time frames. Now, I always like to look at my Bob system. It tells us whether the market outlook is bullish or bearish for the different time frames. Here, we've got a 30-minute, a one-hour, a two-hour, a five-hour. tells us exactly where we're at as well as it's looking for those bottoming signals out here. So if we take a look at these short-term time frames, and I'd post it inside the den, well, the question, my friend, may be blowing in the wind, and the wind here would be inside the Russell 2000. It is the Russell 2000 30-minute chart that is the only chart that is showing us a potential for a bottom, and so therefore we need, this, this tells me where it is that we need to focus our time on to try to answer that question. You'll also notice you've got a two-hour and a five-hour signal of a top inside uh, treasury bonds out there. Again, it all depends upon your time frame. And we don't really know what James's time frame is out here. But for example, if the market is going to form a bottom, equity market, any market, any instrument out here, uh, typically what we like to see is one of a few patterns, but the best ones are the rose momentum indicator signal out here. And that's Right here, you can see the line being drawn from this hammer candle from around about 11 o'clock this morning. Right now, you can see that price has been pushing lower, doing the rest, doing it with less, um, uh, less weakness out here, relative strength weakness, uh, relative weakness, not strength. And um, but what price hasn't done inside the inside the Tiger's Den hasn't taken out any kind of resistance. Right now, resistance is Stevie's red line. That's 1491. At 1491, it's also the center of its market profile. So the answer to the question, is the market getting ready to bounce, may not come from the ES Mini or the NQ or the Dow. Might be right here, but it's not giving us that signal yet. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we'll, we'll kind of continue with JJ's question, but there's another one that's coming in. This will kind of uh, bleed into it, uh, maybe the same questions that many folks have out there. So this one's coming in from Tom G. Tom writes in, uh, I'm looking at the uh, VIX. I just got out of the TVIX long trade. If the VIX closes over the 10% uh, uh, one-day rate of change, do you think I should take a position in the SVXY, which is shorting the uh, VIX out there? And then uh, he'd also like thoughts on... Uh, on uh, gold, on uh, natural gas, and uh, oil. So, um, so let's go take a look at Let's try to meld all these things together. So before we went to break, we were paying attention to the Russell 2000, just simply because it's the only time frame chart that shows that uh, potential of a shorter term bottoming signal, the road's momentum indicator. Now, we may get the bullish reversal candle. Uh, we won't know for another 11 minutes out here. Uh, but if we do and price can close over Stevie's red line, you can see where it's at right now. We're, in essence, traded into it. That's resistance, by the way. So closing above resistance would say what? Say well, you would go to the uh, next level. Where's the next level of resistance? Well, really at that 1492-ish area, which is the center line of the 30-minute profile for the Russell 2000, there's both buyers and sellers that are hanging out there. So you really need to see a close above that level, 1492. I don't know, maybe it's 1495 is the uh, number, something like that. But if you were to get that, it would say that there should at least be a counter-trend rally in the Russell 2000 to take you up to 1503. 1503 is the current 30 
30 minute profile. That profile can change a half an hour from now or an hour from now, but we'll just go with the numbers that we have right now. Now, the better bottoms are made when the other equity futures contracts are making the same type of pattern on a 30 minute basis. And we don't have that in play here. So we can't go to the NQ. And this is really getting back to Jimmy's question about or James question about the uh, the the queues out here. Um, still, your primary question, James, you know, we're in this consolidation. There, it should be no surprise to anyone. Why it's such a surprise to the folks in the financial media that the markets are doing what we're doing when we've been in this consolidation is, is one, because they don't really understand what a breakout is. It, it, prices never broke out of the uh, consolidation out there. Um, if we take a look at the ES Mini, here's your 30 minute time frame there. Again, Stevie's got no bottoming signal out here. So all we're seeing here is maybe a little counter trend move up to 2862. So it's just the Russell 2000 that's giving us a signal to be paying attention to. So then in essence, back to uh, in essence, if we go back to now Tom's question, he's asking about, hey, spot volatility index, if we get a one-day rate of change. So let's get to our one-day rate of change chart out here. Give me a moment. I believe that's going to come up right about here. Um, what, um, what Tom is asking about, you'll see all the other blue arrows on my screen out here. They also happen to represent a one-day rate of change above 10%, which is what uh, Tom is asking about. So, and Tom's saying, hey, should I take the other side of that trade out there? Here's what I would, here's what I would like to say, Tom, is I, I would say the answer to that would be yes, I'd feel better about that if we saw the same pattern on a 30-minute chart that's right now in the Russell 2000, if we saw that same pattern inside the ES Mini. So more ideally for you, between now and uh, 4 o'clock, what you'd really like to see is you'd really like to see another sell-off inside, um, inside the markets, inside the ES Mini, inside the NQ, inside the Dow. Another big, nice push, but to do it with less relative strength out there, less relative, um, uh, less relative weakness. Uh, to the uh, downside and then look for some type of bullish reversal candle on that 30 minute chart. Then you're looking at, at, at at least another at a nice signal out there. Now, maybe you don't get that. If you don't get that, then what is it that you can rely upon? Or, you know, I like to say, hey, so why is the market bouncing just a tad from where it's at right now? Well, that answer is pretty easy. And the reason why I say that's pretty easy, Tom and James and everybody else out there, is because price just simply has come down to a support level. And so it's testing that support level. What support level are you talking about? Well, really inside the ES Mini, there would be two support levels. The first support level that we'll take a look at is the bottom of its weekly profile out there. The bottom of the weekly profile is measured at 28.62. We're trading right now at 28.56, basically. So just a handful of points below that. We know that price is testing a level of support. If we close below that, does that mean curtains? Does that mean that it's over from here? Well, not necessarily because there's a secondary level of support that the ES Mini is trading into. And that is its horizontal trading range boundary line. The daily horizontal trading range boundary, boundary line is, is are in blue. The red ones are the monthly. The green ones are the weekly. You may say, hey, boy, this looks awfully complicated. It's really not complicated at all. I mean, I could turn off the weekly or the monthly. We're looking at a daily time frame out there. But I think uh, it's best to understand um, where there is potential congestion, which is necessary support uh, as you're driving down the lane here, as you're driving down the expressway. Well, the expressway, you will see, has support. The next levels of support inside the ES Mini are 2836 to 2850. We're trading at 28.55 as we speak right now. So prices come down to a level of support. We're seeing that little bounce out here because it's uncertain whether it's going to be able to take that support out or not. But if you do see a close blow, 28.36, that suggests a further move down. We get back to that June area, June 3rd area, post haste because that could take us right down into a daily and a weekly horizontal trading range level. And that's at the 2772. So what do we know as of 124 in the afternoon? We know clearly that the ES Mini has made its way down to a key level of support. There's been 38 opens or closes at this 2852 level um, for the time period that I've got my data out here on the chart. Uh, and again, it, it goes back quite a way. So it's a real key level of support or resistance, in this case here, support. 
So then back to the spot volatility index. What I would say to you, Tom, is that you're most certainly looking in the right spot. Now, why would Stevie say that? The reason that I would say that to Tom, the reason that I would say that to you, whoever you are, you, you Utes out there, is because if we look at what the spot volatility index is trading at right now, this is 125 in the afternoon. The price point is 2249. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is the bottom section of my data out here, where you see the August contract for the spot volatility index, which, right, quite frankly, is trading at 1995. The September is at 1912. And then we go all the way out into April of 2020. So these are all the futures contracts that are active inside the spot volatility index. You'll see you can go all the way out to April, and that number is 1830. This tells us of a total misalignment. This tells us of a short-term scare out here versus a longer-term scare at this stage. And when this happens, things have to get back in line. It's a matter of trying to time it. Well, the easier timing would be nice nice uh, roads momentum indicator bottom signals like we see in the Russell 2000, but see that inside the ES Mini, because the ES Mini, it's not going to be the Russell 2000 that's going to be the one that's controlling the spot volatility index, but the S&P 500, the ES Mini, well, then the answer there is yes. So we want to be able to see some type of bottoming pattern. It could be. It could be just simply coming back to support inside the S&P 500. But Tom, I'd feel much better to see these markets close um, uh, to, uh, to, to have another push down. I'm not so interested in the close, but another push down between now and 4 p.m. to assist you with that. Because otherwise, that additional push down could be 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, or it might be around 3.30 or 4 in the morning. Just saying. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that is transforming into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off 715, S&P down 78. So um, hopefully, James, I was able to answer your question, in Essen with regard to getting back in um, on your long trade for the uh, S&P 500. Hopefully, I've been able to at least share with you, Tom, uh, my thoughts on trying to reverse the trade inside the spot volatility index um, and what it is that you would be uh, looking for. You asked uh, what my thoughts were on natural gas, gold, and oil oil out here so if we take a look at uh, natural gas let me try to let me see if I've got this open do I um, I don't so just let's do, let's do this I'm just gonna make it open here when we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for natural gas you can see we're at a at a new low what I'm trying to identify out here inside of natural gas some type of bottoming signal and I don't have that I don't have a wave number seven or anything in a Chapman wave count we don't have a TD set up nine count to the downside uh, we don't have price moving lower doing less relative energy from a daily standpoint um, even if I do a little wave count from it looks like about right there nah you know I just don't have anything to signal uh, some type of bottom on a daily time frame for natural gas uh, profile wise or other if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here what we know Tom is that uh, it made its high with that TD setup nine count uh, from that high we start doing our wave count to the downside we're in wave number six that letter F on my screen out there that says that you couldn't possibly if this if, if wave number G uh, wave number seven letter G is going to be the uh, going to be what calls the bottom out here well the earliest that could happen would be two weeks from now you'd have to have a, a higher low next week and then a lower low the following week and then of course that couldn't be confirmed until the week after uh, with a higher low so minimum would be three weeks out uh, for natural gas if we're taking a look at those being the patterns uh, for uh, on, a, on a weekly time frame it, Tom if we look at the monthly chart out here we can see that we are now in this being the month of August is going to be month number eight of a TD setup nine count now the last time that natural gas formed a real significant bottom was back in March of 2016 it did it on bar number eight of that pattern so now you take the weekly maybe the weekly gets to wave number seven uh, this month we already at, well at this stage here this early stage here it's only the fifth we appear to be in bar number eight of a TD setup nine count maybe the intermediate and longer term is lining up for some type of bottom inside of natural gas but I don't see it as we speak uh, today if we take a look at light sweet crude and go try to do the same thing out here I think I have even less information here's the daily time frame chart here for light sweet crude when I say less information I don't have any great patterns out here other than what appears to be a consolidation stuck between support and resistance resistance is 6314 but it looks like support is more likely where light sweet crude is headed to that's going to be around fifty one dollars and eighty four cents that is where light sweet crude on the September contract most recently broke out you can see that number you can see the red line on my screen out there so that's what the daily time frame chart provides for you and I uh, on light sweet crude the weekly time frame chart gives us a breakout level of 50.05 with price on the daily and the weekly trading below Stevie's red line that says you know a further retracement is likely if we look at the monthly time frame chart for light sweet crude price is trading below Stevie's red line and that support level is 47 to 45 so in essence you've got three support levels monthly weekly and daily each of those are lower and that's what it looks to me um, like we're at in light sweet crude but but I wouldn't suggest that you go short light sweet crude right now you're too close you know at 54.94 you got 51.84 you're too close to the bottom um, 
in my opinion, to, you know, to, to take that trade. But but hey, buyer caveat emptor, as they say. So I think I covered everything that you were looking for, uh, Tom. And uh, of course, you, I, I think you're more of a shorter term trader, so you, you might not really be that interested in the daily and the weekly charts out there. So if that's the case with regard to natural gas, you know, in your style of trading, if we just go to the 30 minute time frame chart, the one thing that you know is that the breakout level or the breakdown level held. That's the green horizontal line on my chart, and that was tested earlier today, and that was at $2.09. And those green levels, you would really need to see price close above that in order for there to be any kind of short covering rally or anything else. So right now, resistance has failed. And the uh, third down, it bottomed this morning, too, with the TD setup nine count. It was the bar following bar nine, but price just simply made its way up to resistance and then sold off from there. So the 30-minute time frame chart is saying, no, I don't think so. And if I look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here for light sweet crude, you know, I've got price coming down to short term support levels. 54.34 was where the uh, bottom held here. But um, uh, based on what we looked at on the daily, the weekly, and monthly, I, I, you know, I'd be flipping a coin, not even flipping a coin. I think the odds are not in our favor to, to take that trade. I just don't, uh, it doesn't mean it won't trade higher. I just don't see it in the chart patterns out there. And in essence, that's what you have asked me to take a look at. So Alex writes in and Alex says, hey, Steve, got to fill in the UDOW. I uh, used a price from June, have a gain. Can I wait till Tuesday to sell? So the UDOW is uh, the long position, right? Let me just put it on the chart. Let me just pull it up and make sure. The That is the... Uh, that is the long side of the Dow. So I, I think I've answered that question, but let me be real specific here. I don't have a bottoming signal for the UDOW. Now, on a 30-minute time frame basis, the last bar, the one that completed at 130, is bar number eight of a potential TD setup nine count. So on a very short-term basis, it's possible that you'll see a bit of a more bounce. What you need to see in the Dow Equity Futures contract at a minimum is a close above 25,802. The profiles that are currently here are so much higher above that at 26,070 on a 30 minute time frame that, that a new profile is likely to form before price would get up to that area. So there's the potential on a very short term basis, Alex, because you're asking about waiting till Tuesday. We really need to see some signs and they're just not there at 137. Doesn't mean we won't get them, you won't get them. Just means they're just not there. Again, my preference would be be, like we discussed, another nice push to the downside, done with less relative energy to the downside, bullish reversal signals, the whole thing out there. I don't have a short-term time frame on a 60-minute basis, although we do have bar number eight there. So it is nice. And look, these TD setup nine count patterns, they are helpful in identifying tops and bottoms out here. 25,872 right now is the number where price needs to close above in the Dow Equity Futures contract. On a two-hour time frame, where are we at? Well, in the two-hour time frame, we are in bar number nine, and we are in wave number seven. That's from the highs out here uh, for the Dow Equity Futures contract. So that's promising. But still, you'd like to see that 30-minute chart give that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. I would prefer to see that, and it would be much easier to then answer that question. So if you do get that push lower, then you can kind of say, aha, and then you need, then you know what to start looking for. And if we move up to a five-hour time frame chart for you, Alex, I got nothing, not a zip, zilch, no sign of the uh, bottom here. And then, of course, we can take a look at the daily time frame. And what the daily time frame chart says to both you and I is over time, price may get to 24,826. But I will say, Alex, maybe not so fast, because today on the daily chart, you're going to be bar number eight, the TD setup nine count. That could signal a bottom is near, a tradable bottom. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So our next uh, request is to take a look at Netflix. This is somebody that is long or is trying to get long. So if we look at the daily time frame chart here for Netflix, what do we know? We know that today price started pushing lower with less relative energy. And uh, what we also know is that on Friday, Friday generated a hammer candle out there. And what we know about a hammer candle, we love this rhyme, is that if uh, you see a, it, well, here's not, this isn't the rhyme, but if you if you do see a close below the bottom of a hammer candle, now we got the rhyme. If you're long, you're wrong out there. So uh, just be careful. Now, we do have the potential of a bottoming signal on the daily time frame, but what you're going to need is some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. Um, you know, could come as early as tomorrow. So it's got the potential there, but the you're trading below the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 312.60. That's not good. We have a close below the bottom of a hammer candle. That's not good. Price is moving lower, doing less relative energy. That's okay, good, but not until you see some type of bullish reversal signal out there. And price is trading below Stevie's red line. Uh, that is not good, especially because the bounce that Netflix had. So the line turned from green to red back on, looks like July 18th or the 19th. And then you had a test of that red line on the 26th and the 29th. Both of those were a deflection lower. That's the um, Stevie's oscillator and change line that tells us the price oscillator is below zero and falling. That's never a really good thing out there. Price 
out here for Netflix. If it does continue to push lower out here, we would look to the weekly time frame chart. And the weekly time frame chart, what we also know is price is trading below the bottom of its profile. And this suggests on a longer term basis, an immediate term time frame, that what price is doing is pulling back to its breakout area. And that's at 256.58 to be exact out there. So it looks like what over the intermediate period of time until the daily chart gives us that bottoming signal that instead Netflix wants to trade lower. If we look at a monthly time frame chart out here, we don't have a topping pattern or a bottoming pattern. We do have is the bottom of its monthly profile. And that's at 251.83. And it is a bear structured profile, meaning that the center line at about 325 is closer to the top, which is at 374, than the bottom at 251. When you start trading below that center line of the monthly time frame out here, any you know uh, center line, any bear structured center line, it says that sellers should have the energy to be able to push price lower. So, um, uh, Short of a confirmed bottom pattern inside Netflix on a daily time frame chart out there, I say you've just got to be you got to be careful. Um, you you got to be careful, and, and I really want you to, I really want you to 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 do. If you're just if you're trading, it's a different story, and we're we're truly, in my opinion, in a trader's marketplace out here. Um, but what I don't want you to overlook is is really where we're at. You know, I I I, I hope as much as I can to make to make this simple. The interpretation of the market. We knew, you and I knew, we all knew that we're in this, we headed into this unfavorable seasonal cycle that typically identifies a top uh, towards the uh, end of July. So we know that. We know that that unfavorable seasonal cycle lasts until the middle of October. So we've, we've got that going for us. And then what we had going for us was all kinds of topping signals coming into play at the same time that that was taking place. Now, those topping signals were way ahead of Trump's tweet out there. It's just the other folks on these other media channels that really don't recognize patterns that are associated with highs and lows out there that are always looking for some reason to be able to push and to sell out there. We don't do that. I'm not selling you anything other than, hey, pay attention to these patterns. You go from the June 3rd low in the ES Mini up to its high out there, its all-time high, what does it do it with? Wave number seven, that's letter number G. Price is pushing higher, does it with less relative energy, generates the bearish reversal signal. That gives you another sign of a top out there. Now it says that over time, what the ES Mini should do is target the 2744 level. I'm not saying it does it tomorrow. I'm not telling you when it's doing it, but we're in, and we're in the consolidation pattern. Everything was lined up, everything was lined up to just simply uh, say, uh, uh, everything was lined up to say, hey, there's the, it's not just the ES Mini, it's the NQ. The NQ was making the same kind of patterns, although in this case here was a nice three drive to a top pattern. Uh, now in this NQ, it's already busted through a key level of support, which was 77.43. That's where it had last broken out. Now, today inside the NQ and the ES Mini, only day number five, of a possible TD setup nine count. Whereas in the Dow, we took a look at that. And maybe I did that too quickly for you. I don't want the hocus pocus out here. But uh, here you're gonna be in bar number eight. Remember, it can be bar number eight, nine, or the bar following nine of this pattern that can help us to identify a, a bottom or a top, in this case here a bottom. This says short of that, 24,826 is where it's gonna uh, be. And, and, and Ruby, thanks for just mentioning the rate cut out there because there was another thing that was also going for us. Remember you got the talking media heads out there wanting you to believe, wanting you to believe. And this is where I don't really get Trump because he, he, he needs he needs to listen to our shows here because the reality is equity markets move higher when interest rates are moving higher. Equity markets move lower when interest rates are moving lower. Just go look at the long-term patterns out there. It is so evident. I don't know, you know, who, I don't know what these guys are smoking. I don't know what they're drinking. I don't know what they're looking at out there. It is just, it's, it's idiocy, if I can use that word, because I think that's a, it's an okay. So, so Ruby, if they're gonna cut interest rates, it is not good for the stock market. That is not how the stock market works. 
That is not how it has worked historically. We can go back for 20, a quarter of a century and see that out there. And I'm giving you not the day-to-day -day move, not interest rates get lower today and the market moves. I'm giving you the larger view of what takes place inside the uh, market out here. Um, so it, there was just simply all these things that are going for us. So we're in this consolidation until we see some other change to patterns that are out there. It doesn't matter about tweets and this and the other thing out here. So we'll just, well, I'm just going to trade it based on the patterns and the uh, numbers out there. So, so, so much for that. Okay. So let's see if there's any other questions that have come in. Looks like we've covered everything out here. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I don't see anything else. Uh, I don't see any questions inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And um, so what else? So what What do we go look at out here? Now, I don't want you to interpret um, what I'm saying here as uh, you, you should sell everything or you should sell everything today. I'm absolutely not suggesting that to you at all. I think the thinking should be more like Tom's. Uh, that had written into us where he's looking for some type of short-term change out there. Uh, and, and, and the reason is we really, we, we, we reviewed it, we discussed it a tad, but it's really with regard to the mere fact that you now have this dislocation of the spot volatility trading at 22.78, all above all of its forward futures contracts. Folks, not saying it's happening at 1.50 in the afternoon, but that pattern, has always led to a counter trend rally or a bottom. If you want to sell, wait for a good counter trend rally. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Look, I, I just went ahead and pulled this uh, chart up on the uh, on, on the screen for you, so you can see it with your own eyes. Your eyes will not lie. And the top portion of the chart is the short-term interest rates, and the bottom portion of the chart is the S and P 500. And uh, Ruby, thank you. She wrote into the den that the chance of 50 uh, basis point cut is up to about 40 percent in uh, September out there. And if that's the case, then I will say that uh, that will be something that will go ahead and push the markets lower into that October time frame. And the market isn't stupid. The market recognizes when interest rates start moving lower that there's problems in River City out there. That is what this chart tells us. This goes back into the 1990 uh, time frame out here. And, you know, interest rates have been rising since 2015, well, up until just recently out here. And, uh, and that's been good for the S&P 500. It has always worked this way. It will always work this way. Um, and the markets, Mr. Market, knows this. It's just these other folks that just read from some prompter or don't really look at charts or just simply want to ignore the facts um, that they just they just they just all drinking out of the same pot of uh, God knows what. Um, so th this is just simply the way that the uh, markets work. So what are you going to watch for? What are you watching for overnight? What are we watching for now over the course of the next couple of hours? What we're really watching for is some type of nice push lower. And hopefully on those short-term time frame charts, when that happens, it'll trigger some type of bottom signal on the 30-minute, the 60-minute, the 120-minute time frame chart that will be the signal of a counter-trend rally uh, that should ensue out there. But without that happening, no bottoming signal. Well, price has lower targets out there. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned because you've got another great uh, several hours ahead of you. You've got David White coming up, uh, your favorite polar bear, my favorite polar bear. I understand Tom is out today, and you've got uh, Larry Pesavento covering for Tom from 3 to 5. And I'll be back with you tomorrow on, uh, hey, what might be Turnaround Tuesday. Have a marvelous Monday. Take care. <laughs>